What's up guys, David Keats here, welcome back to the channel. So, in case you haven't noticed, Kanye is on a mission to get his masters back, and more importantly, to get your masters back if you've been signed to a major label. He recently took to Twitter to post every single page of every music contract that he has signed over the last 18 years. And I think we know where that's going. It's probably going to be a new video coming soon when Kanye gets sued by UMG. Coming soon. On top of that, he peed on his Grammy. Bit weird. And then on top of that, he's been on a tirade and a musical rant to get his masters back, which he feels he has earned the right to own. But let's face it, Kanye has made millions and millions of dollars from the advances from record labels. So why is it so important that he gets his masters back? And why is it so important that you get your masters back? Well, let's look into it because when a major label signs an artist, they are effectively creating masters. That's what they are after. They are basically a bank loan. They are um, a way of putting a bunch of money into getting money out. And the way they do that is by creating the master. So you own the lyrics, you own the song, but they will make the music. So they will pay for it to go in, or you to go into the studio and make the music and they own that. Now this is important because this is where the money is at. In doing so, they will probably, well, they'll put a big label uh, a big record contract in front of you uh, and say in order to do so we're going to pay for it we're going to distribute it we're going to promote it and then we will own it forever and you will get a license basically you will get a bunch of money back which is called royalties and you'll get about maybe 15 percent but we'll get 85 percent of all of the money that's a crazy amount of money now, in doing that, it goes way, way further because in order to take you into the studio and record you, you'd think, okay, no problem at all. There's going to be studio costs, but there's lots of other costs that go into it. So you would get an advance. So let's say in Kanye's case, he got for his, I think it was for his, for his third album, I think he got three million or maybe sixth album. He got three million dollars. You go, that's a crazy amount of money, but it's an advance. So it's a loan. You've got to pay that off any, any sales that you get. So it means that you've got to make 3 million on top of the recording costs and everything else before you get any of your costs back again because you've had that as a lump sum at the beginning. So then on top of that, you've got recording costs and let's face it, Kanye's recording costs are not cheap and he's making a lot of money but he would have spent a lot of money to record these, these tracks. And you get that with major labels. They'll, they'll dangle these big carrots and they'll just be like, we're gonna put you in the best studio. We're gonna get you the best engineer. We're gonna get you the best producers. We're gonna get you the best stylist, the best video makers, the best photographers. Of course, all of these things are coming out of your pocket. And when you sign to a major label, not only that, but we're going to have a massive party. And you go, oh, brilliant, that's fantastic. And all of a sudden you're at this huge, crazy party and all of the labels being invited and they're ordering bottles of champagne and you're getting champagne. You're, it's fantastic. And it, hang on, am I paying for that $250 bottle of champagne? Is that coming out of all of the records I have to sell? Yes, you are, absolutely. Everything is going into your bill. And so you've got to make a certain amount of money back. And the way that happens is by the masters, all of the streaming money and everywhere else where that, where that master can make money. So you're effectively in debt. So on top of that, let me, let's go into a couple of other bits that are in a, uh, a record deal usually, which are now very, very outdated from 2020. But if you don't have a lawyer, they'll be in there just in case they can get away with it. For example, there'll be like a 25% um, distribution and packaging um, fee in that contract and you think okay but music's digital now there's no there's no there's no manufacturing and and producing because there's a lot less cds this is just whacking it onto spotify and they go yeah 25 percent that is yeah it's a lot yeah and you go oh there's a 10 percent breakages fee and you go what's that and it's like well um, back in the day when we used to do vinyl, we'd send it out on trucks and of course trucks would go over potholes and some of the vinyl would get broken. So effectively 10% extra uh, we'd have to put in there. So that 10% would come from you and you go, oh, that makes sense. Except vinyl isn't really that much of a thing and it doesn't get transported around in lorries and everything is out on a phone. And so breakages doesn't matter. Yeah, it's 
probably still going to be in your contract. You think, that's not very good. And you go, oh yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's another 10%, which is free promo. And you go, what's that? And you go, well, back in the day when it was shops and, and all the shops had records, we'd have to sort of give them a bit of extra incentive. So we give them 10% for giveaways and that kind of stuff. And you go, we don't do that anymore because it's digital. And you go, yeah, but that's still in the contract as well. So all of these fees are still in there. And you're thinking, God, this is a lot that's been taken out. And you're racking up debt. So that's why someone like Kanye, or let's take another example, let's take an artist like, if you remember the, the, the girl group TLC, they sold 65 uh, million albums, 65 million albums, and individually they were making $75,000 a year. Can you imagine how much 65 million albums cost as sold for how much money they were making in order to get 75 grand a decent wage crazy but that's because they're so much in debt they're just paying back the debt at all times uh, and then if you don't pay back your debt what happens it goes into your second album so it's like okay my first album didn't do so well so i'm quite in debt for this but the second album that's really going to fly that does a lot lot better but you still got all the debt from the first album which you're still trying to pay off and so if that goes into the third album, you're constantly racking up debt. Plus, if you do get into your second album and you are doing quite well, let's get a bigger studio. Let's go in the studio for longer. Let's get a better producer. Let's get two producers. Let's get more engineers. Let's have a bigger tour. All of that is going into racking up more debt for you time and time and time again. And so if you do a great first album, then the second album is going to have more costs, more debts, plus anything from the first album. And it goes round and round, which is why you get so many artists that feel like they're a slave and so many artists and bands that are constantly on tour because they have to be. They have to, they have to eat food. They have to be out there so that they're constantly making money from touring instead of the masters. And that is where someone like Kanye is saying, hang on, this is not right. I, this doesn't make sense because I have paid off, massively paid off my debt. And so in a, in a record contract, you get this word called perpetuity. And so what it means, what, perpetu, what perpetuity means is forever and ever and ever. It means whatever happens, we own this in perpetuity. We own your stuff forever. And if you pay back the loan, because if this was a bank loan, we'd pay back the bank loan and go, thank you very much. Shaky, shaky, shaky hands, off we go. And the label goes, yeah, I know, but we still own your masters. And you go, but I paid off the debt. And they go, yeah, but we still own the masters forever. How crazy is that? And that's just the way it works. So how do artists make money for if they don't have the masters? Well, Kanye's okay because Kanye has several places that he makes money. For example, if you look at his Yeezys, his shoes, he did a deal with, um, with Adidas. Um, and I think they said that he's sold $1.3 billion and he's on a 5% royalty. So that's $65 million. So he's doing okay for money because he's got the name, he's got the brand. But he's not making as much from his music, he's making more from others. If you look at Chance the Rapper, he made $6 million from selling hats in 2018. That's just the way the music industry works. And that's why a lot of big labels will then recognize that and say, well, hang on a minute, we want a piece of that pie as well. And not only will they sign you for the music, but they'll sign you through to a 360 deal where they just say, yeah, anything you make really, we just want a bunch of that money. So that's why you're getting more artists like Chance the Rapper who are just saying, I don't need that because I can build the brand, I can own the masters, and if I own the masters, I can tell you where it's gonna go. And more importantly, I can tell you where it's not gonna go. Can you imagine you've made your piece of music, it's yours, it's your art, you're, you're in love with it, it's fantastic, it's a piece of your history and everything that's gone into it, only for some labels, if it's, if it's in the contract that they can do what they want, to go and get some money by sticking on a Tampax advert and you're like oh man this is my art this is my life this is my story so the reason why it's so crucial to own the masters is because if you own the masters you have the control and more importantly you have the future investment so effectively, down the line, this is your little pension. More money keeps coming in, you get it. More money keeps coming in, and it's not racking up debt. And more importantly, and the big thing is, you're not racking up debt, which then goes into the second or the third or the fourth or the fifth album, because 
Why are they going to get rid of you because you're the cash cow, you're the cash cow? And make no bones about it, Kanye West, who Joe Bi uh, Joe uh, Budden says, not Joe Biden, it's very different. Joe Budden says is the greatest discography in hip hop history. So huge. And, Joe, and uh, Kanye West is literally paying for all of the other artists who aren't recouping, who aren't doing well, that have been signed, that all of that money is going in, that they're not taking enough money. Kanye is paying for all that with his 85%. It's crazy. But that's the way the music industry works when you sign to a major label. It's all about we own you. We own the work. So therefore, anything you have created whilst, you know, whilst on our watch, it's now ours, and if we want to make money from it, we are going to rinse it as much as possible. So this is about control and future money, and that is why it's so crucial to own your masters. Now, depending who you sign to, you will get a huge, a huge contract, as you've seen from Kanye, hundreds of pages of, of contract, of which, you know, what's really funny is when people start going, yeah, I was having a look at Kanye's contracts. I was having a look through Kanye's contracts. I don't understand a word of it. That's why you have a music industry lawyer. I never understand it when you get um, music business courses and they're like, let's have a look through a music contract. And you're like, I don't need to know what's in a music in industry contract. I need to know how to find a bloody great lawyer who's gonna make sure that I don't sign something bad because there's a bunch of words in there that I just don't understand. So from that point of view, when it comes to signing a contract, you need certain things in there that are not going to be A, forever, that allow you, potentially your masters, if you look at someone like Taylor Swift and Kanye recently, who now says, I, I own the last bunch of, batch of masters, but I don't own the early stuff and I can't get hold of them. And, and Universal will want 65, 75, 85 million dollars to buy them back, which is a crazy amount of money. So. You just need to make sure that you have a very, very good lawyer that can make sense of a good contract and not allow you to jump into something at the age of 16, 17, 18, when all of these dangled carrots are there being like, you know, we're gonna make you a star. We're gonna, we're gonna put you in this studio with these producers and do a collab with your favorite artists. Yes, sign me up, I'll do whatever it takes only for then five years later to feel like you've been ripped off when you've paid the debt and you still can't get your, your art back. You still can't get what you own back again. It's a crazy time. So it'd be very interesting to see what Kanye does next because we've seen it with Prince, we've seen it with Michael Jackson, we've seen it with Taylor Swift a little bit. So you never know, maybe times are changing and maybe Kanye has enough power. After all, he's got a, uh, a lawyer for a wife. Maybe we will see the end of these silly contracts which are very unfair on, on artists going forward. So yeah, very interesting. Anyway, more importantly, do me a favor, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. More importantly, come and be a part of this community and if you want to work with me on a kind of more one-to-one -one basis, then don't forget there's DK Music Business Academy. So I'm doing two live sessions every single week. I'm in the community. We're chatting about stuff like this every single day. And on top of that, I'm making courses every single week. So it's, it's in the link below. Go and check it out. Otherwise, have a good one and I'll see you tomorrow.